Well, hello, how are you? It is so good to see you. I'm Mary Sue, and I am so grateful that you're here. So today's message is really for all of you that are attracted to the title or somehow feeling called to um, this message. So I'm just putting it out to the collective, and um, if you're resonating with it, wonderful. Um, I hope you enjoy it. And if not, um, then this message may not be for you. All right, so let's jump into it. Let's Let's see what um, what spirit has to share with us today. Okay, you have grounding. Go deep. Explore your roots. All right, so this is the energy of the first chakra. Um, this is the energy of allowing yourself to uh, reconnect to your inner child, to your inner self, okay? Um, the, bringing in this energy of taking time to reconnect to, to Mother Earth, right? Spending time in nature, um, barefoot if possible, gardening without gloves on, really just touching Mother Earth, getting that energy of being grounded. Um, kind of almost imagining, you know, the earth and allowing your roots to kind of like go deep to, to get that energy, especially if you are feeling anxious at this time. Um, this is the energy of allowing yourself to go within and know that you are kind of, they're saying like oak, right? She's like leaning against an oak tree, understanding that you have the strength, the perseverance, the resilience of an oak tree. You are like an oak. So um, going within and knowing just how strong you are, no matter what you may be encountering at this time. And then you have dog spirit. And I love this. It says, be loyal to what you love. There is an energy here of being perhaps a little bit more playful in life, right? Um, of understanding that um, a life isn't all about <laughs> being serious. Um, and this is the number 19. One plus nine equals 10. It means that you're at the end end of a difficult cycle. It could be even about taking some time out to understand just how much you have grown on this path, how different you are now because of what you have gone through, right? When we are bent because of certain circumstances in our life and we don't break, we are actually stronger because of it. And I think that this is something about you going within deep and knowing that as you move forward on your path, it's very important for you to be loyal to yourself. Okay, it says be loyal to what you love and what you love should be yourself. So um, taking um, note that as you move forward, perhaps in this last chapter, you spend a lot of time trying to please other people or or shift into what it is that they wanted you to be or to do. This is you taking back your power, being that strong oak, taking back your power and, and allowing yourself to step into the energy of of following your heart, doing what, doing what you feel is the best in alignment for what you want for yourself. Um, and sometimes that takes a lot of strength, right? When we are in this energy of the first chakra, it's the safety and security. We may feel if we step out of what um, is expected from the people in our life or in society or whatever, if we step out of that, then we no longer will belong. We no longer will have this sense of safety and security. This is allowing you to know that you have that within you. Um, there's a strong message coming out about not being fearful of taking the direction, the path, as you enter a new chapter. You are definitely entering a new chapter. So it's kind of like, as you enter this new chapter, keeping in mind what is best for you and the direction you would like to go in. Yeah, because you have peace. Open your heart. This is a, a little bit about taking a little bit of a break, I want to say. Understanding one chapter doesn't end and the next one <laughs> begins immediately, right? It's the energy of understanding, okay, I'm going to process just how much insight, wisdom, strength, resilience, perseverance, love for myself that I have gained out of the difficult experiences that I have been in, 
in the past. It's not about pointing fingers or, or resentment or anger or feeling guilt or shame for anything that you may have done. Instead, it's kind of like coming to peace with it, okay? It's the Opanopo prayer, right? The Hawaiian prayer. It's allowing yourself to, to find peace with the situation, to allow yourself to forgive others and to forgive yourself. That doesn't condone anybody's actions, right? But it does allow you that sense of relief least that sense of freedom that sense of peace to be able to move forward in a in a much lighter energy than perhaps you have been experiencing in this last chapter for some of you this could be the end of a karmic cycle for some of you this could be the the end of learning a, a true soul lesson right like um you know this could be i don't know i keep hearing the number seven it could be seven years it could be seven to ten years that you have just felt you know the other thing is um you know, we had the Pluto in Capricorn from 2008 until earlier this year. It could be that you're finally coming out of that energy of Pluto in Capricorn, of feeling like there are certain rules and regulations that you have to follow in order to keep other people in your life happy, whether that's your romantic partner, your family, your friends, your boss, society at large. It doesn't matter. This is the energy of opening your heart to understanding. I, I don't have have to please anybody else but myself and that doesn't mean that we have the right then to hurt others to d take actions that please us but hurt necessarily are detrimental to other people right but it is finding that balance and you have the angel love you have the ten of cups coming in imagine bless this is just a brand new cycle of just beautiful energy of of really imagining allowing yourself to take some time to imagine what what is it that you want on this next journey? And not asking other people, what do you think I should do? This is the energy of going within and saying, hey, what do I want to do? I want to be loyal to myself. I want to be loyal to that part of me that hasn't maybe been able to express itself, even from childhood. To me, this picture always looks like a little girl, right? When I was, a, probably for me, it's because when I was a child, I loved climbing trees and sitting next to trees, right? It's that energy of reconnecting to the inner child of you, those dreams that maybe you put on a shelf for a long time because there were other things things that came up in your life that you had to go and take care of, right? Maybe you got married and started a family and you had to put time and energy into raising your family. Maybe you're in a new chapter now where it's kind of like, okay, that phase of being a parent and although you're always a parent, <laughs> once a parent, you're always a parent, but it's kind of like, okay, maybe your, your little birds have left the nest and now it's time for you to kind of like realign to what it is that you would like for yourself because this is you stepping into the energy of opening your heart and loving yourself and loving your life and saying hey what do I want to get out of this life you know what what is it that I still want to do? What legacy do I want to, to have in this lifetime? How, what impact would I like to make in the world, right? Um, so it's really beautiful. Yeah, this is you kind of... I, I'm going to say for some of you, there is the energy of love, okay? Of, of a romantic partner. And, and if you've been following me for a while, I don't jump there very often, okay? But I am going to say there is something about reconnecting. There is something about reconnecting to your heart, but perhaps to people, and it doesn't have to be romantic, okay? But to people in your life that you would like to reconnect to. Because we have the garden and the gate. And in this um illustration you can see that there is a gate there but she's hesitant she's not opening it i feel like that's part of where you are right now there's a new chapter available to you but you're hesitant it's kind of like do i really want to open that gate and go in a new direction because there is this essence of if I go across that threshold, right? If I open that gate and go across that threshold, 
The thing is, is that I'm stepping into the unknown. And sometimes, right, we stay in a cycle, even though we know it's not good for us. It's toxic. We're, we're tired of it. We, we've lost total interest in the things in our life, right? But instead of making a change, instead of opening that gate and going through to this next chapter, what we do is we sit there and we think about, <laughs> think about, well, what could be on the other? side this is you taking back your control and saying what do I want on the other side of that gate right instead of fearing what could happen if you open the gate you are allowing yourself to imagine right to step into the energy of loving yourself enough to say hey what would I like on the other gate on the other side of the gate right what is it my ten of cups what is my ten of cups and seeing clearly what that is and then taking action okay now for some people, taking action can seem daunting. We think that we have to immediately jump into something. <laughs> but once again, you know, the grounding energy. It, it takes a little bit of time to kind of like envision what it is that you want. You know, perhaps making a vision board, seeing clearly, putting it in pictures, what it is that you would like to create in your life. And it's not about, oh, I have to get up tomorrow morning and completely live my life in a total different way. It's about taking those baby steps. If you're feeling overwhelmed, it's about taking those baby steps. One little baby step each day will lead you in the direction of what it is that you are truly desiring, right? It's not about feeling overwhelmed and saying, oh my goodness, that's a big change, right? It's kind of like just taking those little steps. So if you want to start eating more healthy, right? Instead of saying, okay, well, that's it. I'm throwing out all the processed foods <laughs> or whatever, or I'm never eating fast food again. You know, making something huge, you know, like going so big. And I'm not saying that you may not want to work up to that, but how about breakfast? Could you start with healthy breakfast? Could you say, I'm going to focus on eating a healthy breakfast and defining, doing some research if you need to, what is a healthy breakfast for me and defining it, right? And allowing yourself to make an action plan on how you are going to eat a healthy breakfast. May that means on the weekends, you're, you're prepping some food so that when you wake up and you're rushing around trying to get out the door to go to work or wherever you go or spend your day, you, you have the foods available to you so that you can do it quickly, right? It's kind of like, okay, I'm just going to worry about breakfast. The rest of the day, I'm going to eat whatever I normally eat. I'm not going to worry about it. I guarantee you, if you start making healthier choices just with your breakfast, it will start kind of like moving into your lunch and dinner <laughs> automatically because you're you're starting to change your mindset just about one meal well all of a sudden just kind of like start changing your mindset in others same thing with exercise right if you haven't exercised in a long time it's not about going out and joining the gym and think you're going to go five days a week and you know whatever it's kind of like just go take a 10 minute walk Commit to yourself that you're going to take a 10 minute walk every day. And before you know it, that 10 minute walk might turn into 15, 20, 40 minutes, right? You may say, hey, this is feeling good. Maybe I'll join a yoga group, right? It's kind of like allowing yourself to say, I don't have to do it all today. And that could be part of it is that in the past, right? When you have had other people in your life kind of like wanting you to do something, right? And you've thrown yourself into it in order to make them happy. You're you're flipping the switch and you're allowing yourself to to kind of like do it because you want to do it for yourself do it for your love of yourself and therefore it's like you don't have to overwhelm yourself you're just going to allow yourself to ease into it and stick to it commit to it take a little action make a little action plan that you can do every single day right and when you do that, <laughs> it will change your life. There there was a book, something called like Make Your Bed, right? And it, it was the energy of when you get up out of bed, make your bed, right? Because 
as soon as you get up out of bed, if you make your bed, first of all, you're not going to probably crawl back into bed. But second of all, you've already accomplished something that day. <laughs> you can congratulate yourself that, hey, I, I already, I've only been up for two minutes and I've already made my bed, right? And sometimes that positive energy then plays out into, okay, what else can I do? Instead of making a long to-do list, right? And then feeling overwhelmed by it, it's kind of like, okay, I'm just going to commit to taking one little action step and see where that leads. Okay, so let's take a look at your obstacle. Yeah, there's, you know, you have time for a nap and then you have action. It's really kind of interesting because these are opposites, right? <laughs> this is, okay, I'm going to slow down. I'm going to rest. I'm going to relax. This is action. If you have been feeling kind of pulled in two directions about something or you have been somebody that takes a lot of action and then, uh, stops okay once again it's kind of like okay I'm going on a, a big diet I'm going to lose 10 pounds 20 pounds whatever it is right and here's my strict diet and I'm going to follow this okay that's taking action but then what happens two three days later you've stopped the diet right because you can't stick with it this is helping you to understand that it's about moderation. It's the six of cups. It's kind of like, how can you make whatever it is that you're going towards instead of taking this energy of divine masculine, okay? It's balancing it out because we have the angel of love here, right? It's balancing out with the divine feminine. It's kind of like being kind and gentle to yourself, accepting yourself for where you are at this time, and saying, okay, I'd like to make a change in my life. I don't want to continue staying on this side of the gate. I want to open the gate. I want to cross this threshold. But I'm also a little concerned. Can I stick with it? Because for some of you, you may have this energy of not sticking with something. You take a lot of action, but it only lasts a couple of days. And then you stop it. This is you allowing yourself to break that habit by saying, hmm, I've tried that before, right? And I can tell you as somebody that has been on a lot of diets, right? And diet plans and everything else, right? And this does not have to be about dieting, right? It can be about anything. Um, it is true that sometimes we get all gung-ho about something. We want to take action and go forward, right? But then we're critical of ourselves if we can't keep it up, right? It's, it's kind of like you go on this really strict diet and then you go to the office and somebody's having birthday, a birthday and you have a little slice of cake, right? Say you have just a little piece of cake, right? And then you, you kind of come down on yourself. You deplete your own energy by not saying, hey, so what? It was my best friend's um, birthday and I had a little cake. That is part of celebrating life. Celebrating birthdays is a part of celebrating life. Now, it is about, <laughs> you don't want to be celebrating every day, right? But it's also about not beating yourself up when you, when you have a little bit of a sidestep. It's about, okay, how can I get back on track? And it's also about not making it so strict that you can't stay with it. That could be something that you learned as a child. Like you could have grown up in a very strict environment or in an environment where somebody didn't help you learn how to have like resilience, um, perseverance, right? A sense of willpower maybe, you know, or something like that. And that is, uh, going back to this, this is the energy that I'm getting here, is that you've ended a difficult cycle. There could be something that because this cycle was so difficult, you walked away from taking good care of yourself or something. You had to put your time and energy, perhaps, into your job or career because you were financially strapped or, or you know, your sense of safety and security was taken away. Okay, give yourself a, a little bit of a, of a break. Give yourself a hug. Give yourself the energy of, you know what, I love you because you were doing the best you could in a difficult situation and you got through it. You're on the other side of it. So it's kind of like, okay, that chapter is over. Where would you like to go from now? And it's not about making big lofty plans, right? And then, uh, no, I'm going to take that back. You can make the big lofty vision of where you want to go, but don't 
overload your energy by creating some action plan that is just unrealistic is allowing yourself to just take that baby step and just see where that goes right and then when that baby step takes kind of like becomes part of your daily ritual then take the next baby step and then just keep going from there because here's the thing you have this energy of really going within you have man holding a heart this is the king of cups energy overcoming the emotions and this could be part of it is overcoming the emotions of here i am i'm going off after what i want to do and then oh my gosh i i couldn't stay with it so i took a nap right and then beating yourself up because of that it's allowing yourself to not um ride the emotional roller coaster and to understand that part of what you have been through is helping you to have this sense of perseverance sense of resilience strength sense of being strong as an oak right yeah it's the treasure it's the treasure that you have built within yourself that allows you now to kind of move forward to decide the path that you want for yourself. But I think there is something here first about really appreciating what you have been through and how it has allowed you to learn more about yourself, to understand just how strong you are, right? How perseverant, how resilient you are, that you can overcome any obstacle. And it's it's no longer, I think there's a sense of coming to peace and not having so much fear about how to move forward because it's understanding that having this emotional groundedness, okay, this is almost like the energy of losing the drama of life, right? And just stepping into the energy of enjoying um, what you have in front of you and where it is that you want to go, right? When we say we want a drastic change in our life, what we're saying, first of all, is that we don't like where we are. We don't like anything about the life that we're in. Take a moment first. There are good things about your life right here, right now. And stepping into that energy of really appreciating what you have right here. And yes, do you want to perhaps go in a new direction and bring new things into your life? But first of all, be appreciative of what you have at this moment. And then allow yourself to say, I want to move in that direction. Not, I've got to get out of here or look at how you know, <laughs> how my actions have created this mess in my life. It's kind of like, okay, this is where I am. I'm just coming to peace, right? You have the energy, peace. Come to peace with where you are at this time. Love yourself. Know you've done the very best that you could on this journey up to this point. It doesn't matter about the mistakes you've made. Give yourself grace for doing the best that you could at the time. And, you know, the Openopa prayer it is beautiful. Give yourself grace, right? Forgive yourself for any missteps. And this is like, I'm moving forward in a loving way. I'm not going to move forward in this energy of um, overwhelming myself or criticizing myself. This is the energy of loving yourself and moving in that loving energy towards what it is that you do desire. Yeah, beautiful energy of, of taking action, but taking action in a loving way, right? And, and not, you know, it's almost like allowing yourself to coax yourself forward. Coax yourself out of perhaps the, the hamster wheel that you have found yourself on, on for some time. It's kind of like coaxing. It, it's, uh, it's kind of reminding me that one of my neighbors, her dog got out loose. And, you know, it's a little teeny tiny thing. And we have a lot of hawks. So everybody was out looking for the dog because we were really concerned about, you know, first of all, the dog. But also we didn't want, you know, a hawk to get the dog. And, um, and so there were, there were a couple of ladies down the street and they saw the dog and they were like chasing the dog, right? And <laughs> they were chasing, they were yelling the dog's name and, oh, come here. But they were like running after it. And I was standing on down the street, right? And I just got down like <laughs> onto the ground, almost like a dog, right? And I was just coaxing it and calling its name and, you know, and it had found, you know, something <laughs> it was chewing on that it shouldn't have been chewing on. But anyway, I was like, oh, what do you have? 
you know, I was coaxing it. And the dog just came right up to me, you know, I picked it up and the dog was safe. But that's the energy here is, have you been chasing? Like, you know, um, almost like going full steam at something or things in your life, right? But then you run out of energy and it's just like, you gotta go take a nap or you give up. This is the energy of how can you coax yourself? This isn't about anybody else. How can you coax yourself? How can you give yourself that loving grace of urging yourself forward, right? Um, and I'm looking for the garden in the gate. Yeah, how can you urge yourself, coax yourself, love yourself enough to kind of go through the gate cross this threshold and know that this is a new chapter, a new chapter where you're listening to your heart, you're giving yourself grace and you're enjoying your life. You're enjoying what you have and you're also enjoying about the direction that you want to go in. Beautiful energy there. All right, so let's go ahead and pull a soul truth card for you for some final advice. And I do do personal reading, so if you're interested, the link is in the description box below. I'd really be honored to do a reading for you. So let's see what we have here. Who am I ready to forgive? You know what? I, to be honest, the energy here is that I think you maybe have done a good job of forgiving others that may have hurt you or been part of the pain in the past. This is the energy of forgiving yourself, of just saying, okay, I did the best that I could. You don't have to sit there and overanalyze it or anything. Just give yourself that grace. Just say, I forgive myself. I forgive myself for any of the actions, the words, whatever you have encountered on your life, just know that you did the best that you could at that time. So give yourself some grace. And as you move forward, right, um, allow yourself to stay in that loving energy. Allow yourself to love yourself enough to follow your heart and allow yourself enough love that you can also love the people around you because they also are trying the best that they can on their path. Um, you know, I'm a, I'm a, a retired teacher and I always say it. No parent wakes up and says, I want, how can I screw up my kid today, right? Nobody does. I really and truly don't believe that that happens. Even parents that make choices that I may not have agreed with as a teacher or you may not agree with, right? But understanding we're all doing the best that we can every single day. So allow yourself to give yourself enough grace and allow yourself to give grace to other people too. So what does this say? I'm not what happened to me. I am who I choose to become. And that is exactly what is preventing you from stepping through this gate, right? You're not who you, who, what happened to you. That's on this side of the gate, right? You are who you are um, choosing to become. It's time to open the gate. It's time to step into that threshold. Allow yourself to forgive yourself for whatever has occurred on this side of the gate and choose to become this loving version of yourself that loves yourself, gives yourself grace. Is it time to let go, forgive, and move onward? If your soul is ready to forgive someone else or, else or yourself, forgiveness brings sweet release, freedom, and insight. Look at it from their shoes. Notice how you grew, what you learned. Who do you want to become? And how is this resistance holding you from what your soul wants? Right of forgiveness. I, I can't believe this. The open opo is here. <laughs> and you can go back and look. I shoveled. <laughs> Write a forgiveness letter, then practice it. The open opo prayer today while thinking of the person you are ready to forgive. And the open opo prayer is, I love you. I am sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. And, you know, I think it would be great to do that letter. You don't have to send it, okay? You really don't. But when I do it, it says, you know, like, I love you. And I write down, what do you love about that person? I love you because. And I allow that to be a whole paragraph, okay? And then it says, I am sorry. I am sorry because. And write a whole paragraph about that, right? Please forgive me right? Same thing, whole paragraph about that. And then thank you. What are you thankful for about having them in your life, right? Whether they're in your life anymore or not. And then after you do that for the people that you may need to allow to release that energy from, 
then do one for yourself. Allow yourself to write the open up prayer to yourself, to your former version of yourself, right? Allow yourself to let go of what has occurred, your actions, your words, and allow yourself to step through that gate and and focus on be <laughs> what was the words because I love this who you choose to become who you there you go all right okay I'm going to leave it there I love you so much thank you so much for all of your support and I hope to see you again really soon bye for now